Stugatz, I am sure at this point that uh, many people listening to this are tired of me lamenting whatever, but mostly <laughs> lamenting that the last couple of years of trying to do it ourselves has been hard. You can hear it in the David Sampson audio glitches, and I was just told that Tony is now prepared to do his top five, but as I listened in cue to Tony <laughs> not going to the most creative of places here in Mail It In Week, where I thought he'd be all over Miami giving us top fives. Instead, he just wandered, sauntered over to the room next door, which also the audio doesn't work on. He's six feet away from us. That's correct, but I was told the audio wasn't working, and he sounded sort of intergalactic, and it was but this is while all of you are in my ear all the time about how badly you want to go to the Super Bowl. And I've been told that if we go to the Super Bowl, it's one technical person. I'm sorry. Every person who goes from a microphone talking standpoint needs two technical people with them to go to Las Vegas. Ours is a giant show. All of this seems like it would be really expensive. It's got to be planned. We're planning on the Dolphins being in the Super Bowl, in which case we'd want to be there, but the Dolphins can be the seven seed in three weeks if uh, football footballs. Right, so that's why the T-shirts were $40, huh? Cover the cost. I, I mean, two for one. Every guy who speaks into a mic needs two tech people. That's not going to be paid for by T-shirts. I think you have <laughs> Vegas being a lot cheaper than it is. And I've heard whispers about what your expense accounts look like uh -oh. every time that you leave town, how you crush your mini bar. <laughs> I love a good mini bar. I do. I mean, listen, it's hard when it's your own money. But when it's yours, oh, that mini bar but, gets a lot easier to but, open. But the problem is it is all our money. Uh -oh. It is because we all own the company. I don't know why I'll you stop doing it. Then, why, I don't know why you behave in the self-destructive fashion of thinking you're not impairing your own value to the company. And you're, I, I, it's, it's really confusing to me that you don't understand this part of ownership. That when I travel, I open that mini bar, the money I'm spending is mine? Is that what you're saying? You are diminishing the value. But more of it is yours. I mean, I mean but that makes it easier to open the mini bar. Okay. I'm just saying. Okay. Well, I, I've heard you in Vegas is a bad idea. Yeah. Just generally a bad idea. Agreed. That's not going to be anything that's responsible. Yeah. But uh, I'm told Tony's sound is not working or is working, uh, so I don't trust it. But we're going to try it anyway. Uh, thank you, Tony, for giving so much thought to your top five on a Wednesday and where it would be that you just wandered over to the next room to do it. Uh, do we have any OLI? Give him his music, please. <laughs> Hey, Dano, listen, this is this is very thought out, very precise. I wanted to do this for a very particular reason, because we're getting close to the Super Bowl. We're hoping to go. We want to go. And I want to show you. I was born to be a drive time radio host. So what I want to do here is just kind of do a little crosstalk with you guys and make it seem like the good old days where you would crosstalk with Joe Rose or whoever it was. I don't, do you want to do it with Billy? He's shaking his head right now and not supporting anything There's that's so happening much waste here. In this company. <laughs> so much waste. I'm actually doing us a favor. The live view that we go out with is very expensive. So I'm actually saving us money. Sorry about that. I don't think we ever crosstalk with Joe Rose. He was doing mornings. We were doing afternoons. That would have been But he's weird. just talking about right. classic crosstalk. Exactly. Where you hand a show Neil over Hank, yeah. to the next show. Do uh, you want to do it with Billy? Who do you want to do it with? I remember you guys doing crosstalk one time with Boog when there was like a hurricane and there was no power remember was at tamiami park waiting in line to get ice and you guys just did crosstalk with boog for like three hours because no one had power so no one wanted to go home so you guys just did like multiple shows together were you working on the show then or were you just a listener because i was an ice point. procurer at the moment <laughs> waiting to get ice from my house that had no power yeah but were you somebody no, who, i was a I, listener at the moment oh yeah. so you weren't you weren't employed this is something that i was you employed remember. not here though you said i want to make a career of that i'm listening to crosstalk between boog dan and stugatz that's what i want to do for a livelihood i thought it was cool i also thought it felt very different than whatever this is about to be okay what's so, that supposed to mean uh, so this was were you an fiu student at the time yeah, or pause up had you recently graduated no 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 would you like to do the crosstalk with tony or does uh would you prefer that he do it with us 
I'd prefer that he was out on an island by himself and floated away and we never saw him again. But <laughs> it's harsh, man. It's <laughs> what a loser. Holiday season. Wow. Okay. OLI. <laughs> Chargers. Ben Johnson. Collision course. Unless it's Bill Belichick. Then it's Bill Belichick and the Chargers. Uh, Collision course. <laughs> that job's right for the take and stugats. That's not observation. I have no idea what he's doing. But it is pretty funny that uh, last week there was a report that Belichick, it's already been determined, is going to be fired at the end of the season, and we didn't talk about it. Like, that's <laughs> a bit strange. I want to talk about how many teams would fire their head coach to get Bill Belichick. I do. That's okay. coming up next segment, number five. I want to see how far I can push it out. All right, let's yeah. see. We'll okay. try that next segment. Go ahead, Tony. Dak is rounding into perfect December form. That was bad. Watching that one against Buffalo, it's. Uh, I feel like we have seen how Detroit gets eliminated, how Dallas gets eliminated, how the Dolphins get eliminated. I think we have seen the games play out where we're like, okay, that's going to look familiar in a month. Uh, go ahead, Tony. Number four. Number four. Dano, you were all over this one a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week. Baker Mayfield and Matthew Stafford quietly having really nice seasons. It does help, though, when all the other quarterbacks are hurt and you can just throw <laughs> Flacco out there and Baker Mayfield, and by comparison, they look great. Why? Because Drew Locke is out there playing again. Winner. Winner, by the way. He looks good on that drive. Dan. He did. Really good. Stafford had a throw where he was backing up, backpedaling, back foot, uh, threw it like 30 yards on a line to an out route of like Tyler Higby or somebody that he like toe, toe drag swagged out. It was a beautiful throw. Well, Stafford I, still got it. I don't believe that we have covered well or enough. The idea that in a Super Bowl, Matthew Stafford felt comfortable enough with Cooper Cup as his only receiving option to throw him a no-look pass on a game-winning drive. It's, I, I've heard for 30 years the story of, of uh, Joe Montana coming into the huddle and telling his people 90 yards from the game-winning score, hey, look, John Candy is in the stands, and that was Joe Cool being the coolest. Yep. Throwing no look passes on game winning drives? I don't believe, I believe that by itself should put Stafford in the Hall of Fame. Go ahead, Tony. Ag agreed. Number three, Purdy all but locked up the MVP this weekend, but a heady locker room play from the savvy vet saying it should be CMC who gets the MVP, not himself. That's a heady play from a guy who knows what he's doing. But he's not a vet. It's a savvy vet move, though, Dan. That's the that's the point. <laughs> it is. Uh, he's playing like he's already played ten years in the NFL. Right. Like he, he's amazing. Well, I don't know how. I don't know why. Well, I know why. He's got a lot of players around him, but he's playing excellently, <laughs> and he's saying all the right things, and he's doing all the right things, and it's a heady play. Give it to CMC. I don't want the MVP. I'll have it next year. We'll give it to CMC. He's having an incredible season. We'll do it that way. He earns all the locker room respect right there on, on that move. I mean, Tony's right. You lie in that situation. Yeah. Purdy knows he wants it, knows he deserves it, but yeah, you know, you give it to a teammate. Mm -hmm. Right? Leadership. Exactly. Just Maybe like Trevor best. Lawrence walking to the uh, to the locker room after spraining an ankle. ankle. Leadership. Yep. Don't take the cart. Walk. Mm -hmm. Why does he have the same numbers as Daniel Jones for his career? A lot of people have pointed that out. Trevor Lawrence and Daniel Jones look awfully similar. No Trevor one, Lawrence, kind no, of a bum. No one's wow. Are kind of, you out? Kind are, of a bum. Are you out? That I'm means, not out. That means you're out. One that, one foot out the door. That I'm, means you're out. You one can't foot call out the door. A bum and say you're He's not a out bum. on them. You're out on Jackson. He's, He's got a bum point. leg. He's got a bum leg. That's not what you were saying, Tony. When you reach bum status, you are done with that quarterback. <laughs> yes, I'm kind of done with Trevor Lawrence. Okay, well then you're done with Jacksonville and your whole. I'm not done with Jacksonville. There's still something there, but I'm worried about Trevor Lawrence long term. You can't. There can't be something there. You can't be out on their quarterback and say there's something there on their team You're, you've got inconsistent opinions in this crosstalk you are made for sports radio nothing you say is consistent number two number two the lions are back on track dark that horse sound dark like horse for the nfc yes. that sounded like a question mark. it is a question mark <laughs> lions are back on track dot 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 dark horse just throwing it out there. Eagles all of a sudden don't look that good. Mm. Cowboys don't look that good. All right. Some things break the right way all of a sudden. Who are you betting if Detroit goes to Philadelphia? Philly big. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you betting if Philly goes to Detroit? Philly big. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but if they don't go to Detroit, all of a sudden Detroit gets, you know, a different path. 
have to play, you know, the Bucks or whoever, even though <laughs> okay. Baker Mayfield looks good. Okay. If they if they end up with, with San Francisco in an N- NFC Championship game, I'm going to bet the 49ers. But in the back of my mind, I'm going to be like, look, Jared Goff has made it to one of these before. Brock Purdy hasn't. Remember, he was in there for like five minutes, got his arm torn out the socket. Billy, why is your head in your hand? I just, I miss Boog, honestly. <laughs> Number one. Number one. Don't look now, but no one is circling the wagons better than the Buffalo Bills at the moment. Scary team. Josh Allen. Yeah. Terrifying. James Cook. Defense that was hurt, now getting a little bit healthier. Beating Dallas. Obviously, we know what happened with, with the Kansas City Chiefs. We're not going to get there. Chris is very upset. I'm upset, too. Did you? By the way, did you see Kadarius Toney let up a mind-boggling interception last week, too? Yeah, another one went through his hands and ended up being an interception. <laughs> He's so bad. Oh, he's so good, though. That's the problem. He's such an elite athlete, and he's just making plays that are not good for his team. Anyways, Buffalo Bills, keep an eye on, keep an eye out for them. We got it. Because they're circling the wagons right now at the right time, boys. Uh, Mikey A asked a great question on God Bless Football. Is Kadarius Tony a great athlete who's just bad at football? <laughs> <laughs> He has some uh, some drops that end up being interceptions. I would be very frustrated with him if I were uh, the Kansas City Chiefs who uh, are looking for someone to replace uh, Tyreek Hill and Eric Bieniemy, and uh, those receivers are not good enough. But Stugatz, I wanted to ask you something based on the Monday night game. I was surprised this happened to me. I was moved by the relationship between Geno Smith and Drew Locke. The fact that Geno Smith was on the sidelines and very clearly happy in the middle of that noise that Drew Locke was able to do something in his stead. Uh, let's uh, let's hear some of this sound from the postgame interview where Drew Locke is clearly emotional, but this friendship is real, and it was really cool to see these two share at, uh, you know, under some adversity to share that they love each other. And that was it. All right. Excellent. I can't wait to go to the Super Bowl. I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Stugatz, there is so much pressure in-house. Everyone wants to go to Vegas for the Super Bowl. (laughs) And based on that segment, which, again, I will tell you, Tony was just in a room next door. That should have been as easy a transaction as there is. That's just, that is in football, that is uh, taking the snap from center. Yeah. And we cannot execute something very simple easily. I don't know, Tua's had a hard time this season with that. I was actually just going to say, we're like Connor Williams, the Dolphins center, even though he's out for the year. not a compliment. Mm -hmm. We can't snap the ball, but once we do, we're dangerous. This is what I'm going to say, though. You know what? I overstated it. That, what we just did, was so 101 that it's simply breaking the huddle. It's not even (laughs) executing anything with the ball. It's just getting from the huddle to the ball without everyone colliding into each other and the clap being at the wrong time. Uh, I don't have faith in us being able to execute something from Las Vegas when you guys are all going to be partying. I'm going to look up and somebody's going to be stumbling in at 5 o'clock in the morning because there's just a general irresponsibility around here. It sounds like maybe four tech guys for everyone on a microphone sounds like the right number. I mean... The idea that we have to have two tech guys for every microphone and everyone here wants to go and be at a microphone, you have confidence? Does anyone here have confidence in our ability to execute that? Because the problem is we have to start planning now, Stugatz. If I want to be there if the Dolphins are in the Super Bowl. Right. But what is our confidence level right now? in the Dolphins being in the Super Bowl, especially if they have to do road games. Because if you're 10 and 4, Stugatz, you're supposed to be one of the best teams in the league. I've enjoyed well, they are. I I've mean, enjoyed watching hard knocks. Yes, they are, Stugatz. But like Dallas, there's just a whole bunch of people that are pointing at the Dolphins and saying, yeah, good. 
but not good enough to actually win all the games until the end. Like, everyone will acknowledge, yes, the Dolphins are good, but I rarely see these kinds of questions around teams like Dallas and Miami heading into this kind of game late in the season. You don't have these games. Stugat, you just said possible Super Bowl preview. These questions do not exist in the San Francisco-Baltimore game. They just don't. Dallas, Miami has more questions about are those teams actually good than Baltimore, San Francisco does. Well, it's funny because Dallas, they were great. They were the best team in the NFL after they beat Philadelphia, went to Buffalo, got blown out. They're no longer the best team in the NFL. That's just the way it works uh, in the but, NFL. But, but I not, think all those teams have question marks. The only man. team that doesn't is probably the 49ers. No, the 49ers like, do. Like, Brock Purdy needs to do it in the playoffs. Yeah, but the 49ers are the one consensus that everyone's like, this is a great team. The Ravens, to less of an extent, right? Like, people feel confident in the Ravens, but there's also the whole, like, but do it in the playoffs because we haven't really seen it in the playoffs yet. And then, like, everyone else, like, there's then that other tier that you can argue, which is the Eagles and the Cowboys are definitely in that tier. Ask Eagles fans. They think their team's a bunch of frauds. If you ask the Eagles fans, they're not confident in the Eagles at all. Dolphins are in that the tier. The Dolphins may be in that tier or maybe right underneath that tier. But, like, the Cowboys, Dolphins, and Eagles right now are kind of all in that same question mark thing. Jim. And here's the thing. You said that this weekend's game between the Cowboys and the Dolphins is a potential Super Bowl preview. I think that whoever wins that game will still get the question mark, like, but that other team is kind of fluky. So I don't know. Beat an actual good contender. Jim Nance said during the broadcast the other day, I could see this team in Vegas. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> the thing that I would say yes, to against you the Jets. is different about Baltimore and San Francisco, Stugatz, because I know it's not just the playoffs. It's that Baltimore has three losses against teams. They've got, they lose in the division. They've got three losses against teams that aren't the elite teams in the sport. They lost to the Colts, Dan. But even as we talk – about the hyperventilation that goes week to week in the analysis where Dallas can beat Philadelphia and you're like, okay, they're one of the best, and then they go to Buffalo and you're like, what the hell was that? Buffalo, Baltimore, the Chiefs, and the 49ers, nobody drags them. When they lose, it's a surprise. Nobody beats them the way Dallas gets beaten by Buffalo. The way Buffalo beat Miami 48-20 right. doesn't happen to Buffalo. And so my measurement for these things is, yeah, you might have a bad loss. The Bills lost to the Jets. But do you ever get swamped in a way Dallas did when it went to San Francisco where you're like, oh, my God, that's exactly how they're going to lose in the playoff. They're going to go do a road game, and they're just not going to have the horses because they're going to lose by 35 points because that team is clearly better than them. I know Cincinnati did that to San Francisco, but nobody does that to healthy San Francisco. Right. Uh, it's a fair point on Buffalo. It's a fair point on on the really elite team. On the was, Ravens. But well, it's no, not but relevant. No, like, but they Buffalo, could lose by a touchdown. Like, the Bills lose in the playoffs. It doesn't matter if they lose by a field goal or if they lose by 30. It's Once a loss, you lose, right? you're out. No, loss but my, my point on that is just you don't get hit with fraudy when you're always in the games. When no one ever sees you get swamped by anybody so they can't make the assessment. Look, what they just did to Dallas, Stugatz, from week to week, they did it because they're like, Oh, it's not just that Buffalo beat you. It's they manhandled you. Right. They dragged you. That the best teams, Stugatz, when the greatest show on turf lost to the Patriots in the Super Bowl, that team all year, no one could throttle them. Right. There was no such thing. If, if you beat them, you were fortunate to beat them because football happened to them, but not because you could beat them by three touchdowns. No, that's fair. Uh, the Bills' worst loss this year is a six-point loss. So, like, to Dan's point, yeah, they never get blown out. They're also, if the season ended today, a team that's not in the playoffs. That's so, right. <laughs> that's crazy. But the, well, Bills, the Bills game against the Bengals last year in the playoffs wasn't particularly close. That's true, yes, and it's why I was stunned by it. But still, yes, you can lose a playoff game one time. I'm just saying in your assessment, everyone is very willing to dismiss people as frauds. Like, I saw a lot of people doing it to Philadelphia just because they lost – in the most emotional fashion in a Seattle <laughs> game. I do want to get to the sound, Stugatz, because I don't have an investment in this. I have been making fun of the Seahawks since they had a quarterback competition between Drew Luck, Drew Luck and mm. Geno Smith. Right. When I when they started 
two years ago with that as their quarterback competition. I'm like, and that's the end of Pete Carroll, and that's the end of the Seahawks, and that's the end of whatever that dynasty was that they had. It's all over, and Seattle has been better than I thought they were for two years. But what happened at the end of that game where Seattle is going crazy and Drew Locke ends up making the throw at the end, Stugat, so that it produces this post-game interview that was exceptional with Lisa Salters because you rarely see the quarterback almost break down like this. And so what did it feel like to orchestrate this game-winning drive tonight? Oh, amazing won't do it justice. Amazing won't do it justice, but amazing also doesn't do justice with the O-line, what DK did on that catch, what the receivers did, what Ken Walker, Zach Charbonnet did all game long, the tight ends, man. It takes a special group to rally around a guy that you know has come into his second game of the year, right? Used to the same thing all year long, same cadence, same spin of the ball, everything. A, a team like that, not just the offense, the defense to rally around me tonight, man, that was that was amazing. I see some I hear some emotion in your voice. Yeah. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Um, I'm just blessed. I'm just blessed. Blessed with a great group of guys, a great city, great coaching staff. It's just, it's, it's awesome. It's a wow. You hear all the time, Stu Gods, that Aaron Rodgers is a bad guy because he's not uh, mentoring his replacement. The thing that moved me is Seattle wins a game to sort of save its season, its playoff chances against uh, what we believe to be a good team. Seattle is in a frenzy, the emotion of it, after Drew Locke has made a 30-yard throw in the last 30 seconds of the game to win the game. The thing that made me emotional that surprised me is that Geno Smith is wearing over his face in the middle of that noise, he is wearing garb that covers his face to keep him warm. But he is nodding at Drew Locke with what is so obviously pride and happiness for him that I'm like, that's really cool that teammates would be able to share that when Geno Smith is the one who wants to be in that spot. Billy, what are you making faces about? Geno Smith's not good enough to be happy that his replacement's doing so well. <laughs> yeah, but he got paid, Billy. Uh... Geno Smith is 33 years old, and he thought he was going to be a backup forever. He got his opportunity. So I ima- he's a journeyman quarterback. Yeah. So I imagine he's happy for anyone in that situation, yeah. even his own teammate. Why? You think Geno's running the risk of losing his job? Football contracts are funny, and money disappears. <laughs> Appears all the time. Okay. I'm just saying. Right. If I'm Gino, I'm, I'm not super duper happy. I'm, I'm confused what the emotion is, though. Like, this is just a backup playing for a starter. Like, I don't hear Eichenberg getting emotional for the Dolphins when he fills in for Connor Williams at center. Like, it's, but it's just, I just, it's a little, I just, I don't see the emotion in this. Like, this is just a guy, he got an opportunity. This guy wants Geno Smith to get hurt. Now I realize why Billy never applauds me or never gives me any flowers when I do a good top five. When I do anything good, Billy's never there to help me. He's not Geno Smith. This would be like if I walked out after a show where I'm filling in for my grind and I started weeping out there. <laughs> it's just, you guys all helped me. It won't be today's show. <laughs> Dan, can we put that on the poll, please? Is Drew Locke rooting for Geno Smith to get hurt? <laughs> no, I, just, I feel bad I even said it. We don't have to put that one on the but poll. But this is really cool. Like, this is a guy who thought when he first came into the league that he was going to get a chance to be a starter. Yeah. Then felt like maybe he missed his opportunity, was going to be Chad Henney backing up for the rest of his life. And we've seen we, we've seen literally Seattle pay a Matt Flynn, who had one great game as a backup, just based off the projection. So now this is a ton of money that might eventually come into Drew Locke and his family. By the way, married to Lewis's second cousin. Hmm. So a lot of money for That's Lewis. True. Wow. Drew Locke word association will always just be the young Jeezy gif on the sideline of him rapping but to billy's point i guess you want him to act you want gino to act like joe burrow because joe burrow is not cheering on jake browning at no, all joe burrow's been super good to jake browning he know. gave him his sweet two weeks know. in a row for his family no, you shouldn't do that here is why billy is wrong about his assessment of well, gino and smith and drew Locke. that's no fun that's not how we do it in this business <laughs> wait and see is uh, david sampson's if gino smith gets released you're hashtag. all gonna look at me like hmm <laughs> well this is where this is where, though, Geno Smith can be happy behind the garb he was wearing over his face. He knows Drew Locke's not any good. We all do. He just had a moment. We all do. We've seen enough there.
Gino is not threatened in any meaningful way. We thought that about Gino Smith in his defense. Uh, yes, but I've seen Drew Locke play for that team, and he doesn't look like Gino Smith. <laughs> you just went from the cool parts of the emotions That's right. to That's right. on Drew Locke That's within, right. what, three minutes? That's right. That's what I did. That's yeah. correct. Way to go, Billy. That is exactly what happened. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's a lot easier to love Drew Locke when you don't have to worry about him actually taking your job. This would be like Jeremy weeping after like filling in for Kelly Sacco on the heat sideline. I, side would. I, He's I like, would. Guys, yeah, thank you. I just... I get an opportunity. It's a, it's a great Jeremy's point. Weird. No, but it's a great point. I cannot believe that Billy turned you that quickly, Dan. <laughs> Billy, of all people. <laughs> well, because he's he's sitting here saying that he, he's right, generally. The jobs are pretty interchangeable in that sport, except when Drew Locke wants yours. He's not going to get it. I can't weep if I don't have a name or a face.